Thanks, Riv. Cloud9 has got to be feeling good after that victory, keeping their zero-loss streak alive in the playoffs. Uh, is it even possible for them to lose? Uh, it's definitely possible for them to lose, but if they keep playing like that, then no, because it's a very dominant performance over TSM. Their pick band phase seems really sound, and Jat was talking about it there. Their champion pools are really good. You kind of have to focus on a strategy that you don't want them to play and that you want to play, and definitely play to your win conditions. Because this team that TSM drafted for themselves, I was not a big fan of. So we have to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it until somebody does something about it. Dilution prioritization over Tristana. I can't for the life of me figure out why that is. Yeah, somebody tweeted me about that. And I was like, was like explain to me why they prioritize Lucian over Trist. I was like, I can't. Trist in playoffs is 11-2 and two right now. And those two losses are only against Kog'Maw's. So right now she just seems like the dominant carry in the early game if you have a a bad lane matchup, you lane swap it like Cloud9 did. So I feel like the comeback mechanics are just too high here. Pole Belter, what, what do you think about that? I have no clue. Like, I'm not an AD <laughs> carry player, but it just seems like Lucian can't even bully Tristana in lane. And if he can't do that, then why even pick him? Because Tristana will outrange Lucian later in the game. He's going to get two autos off on Lucian before Lucian can even get close to her. And that's already like half HP gone from the Lucian. So I'm not sure. Maybe it's because he thought it would be easier to survive against Fizz than picking like Tristan or Ikogma, but I don't think that it's a very good pick. Yeah, it seemed like TSM was kind of tunneling on this idea of a burst decomp with the Fizz, the Kha'Zix, and then even Lucian, who can pump out a fair amount of damage within a short period of time, and then the comboing it with the Lulu and the Zillion for a little bit of reassurance if things went wrong, right? You can bring somebody back to life or make them semi-tanky. But when you're playing against a team like Cloud9, Pobelter, do you need to match the fact that they are a team fighting team? Um, I think that they just really just tunneled too hard on the picks that they wanted. Like they saw the Zed and they wanted the Fizz to counter it, but then the other team still had like Tristana and Maokai, which both do really well against Fizz. You know, if Fizz ease in, he's going to get rooted and just die. And then the Maokai ultimate reduction is also really big. Um, it seemed like their team just had way too little sustained damage, and the Maokai was just able to nullify everything and they weren't able to be uh, bursting down. TSM. Now, yeah. if we look at the teams in their play style, in, their, in the way that they approached the game, TSM did come out with some aggression. They weren't afraid to take fights. We're actually going to pull a replay up 23 minutes into the game where, keep in mind, Dyrus at this point is already dead. So they're choosing to take a 4v5. Zyrene, if you don't mind walking through this one. Yeah, so what you're going to end up seeing here is the wraparound from Bjergsen. He's actually going to get himself a triple kill with really good placement here on his abilities. And the flash to close distance on Sneaky, the good target prioritization. We'll start rolling a clip out here. And Hi, he's already off on the side. He has no death mark available for this fight. But they wrap around the turret. And this is the Cloud9 strategy that we saw all last year where they would dive turrets very effectively. But then Bjergsen comes from the side and he ta makes use of that. The Zonia is here after he ends up picking them up. Right. I don't know if that was completely necessary because he could have continued the fight and then he ends up getting bubbled afterwards. So overall, Bjergsen did a really good job of engaging the fight because their team doesn't really have a way to engage aside from a flank. So that was an example of them playing to their win conditions with Assassins and Fizz. And it seemed too that TSM, that was the type of fight where you don't have all five members facing off against each other until someone initiates. They were kind of looking for some of that, that chaos that they could capitalize on. Yeah, and I think a big thing here, too, that we end up seeing later on is that there's no front line for TSM. They have two assassins, Lucian, and then two guys who make other members of the team more durable. They have nobody to engage the fight except for a flank or a TP, and they don't have somebody who's just a big damage soaker. Like Cloud9 had both of those types of champions. Uh, to me, the game was lost when Hai got the like just the free first blood off Dyrus uh, being chased down through the jungle and then them getting the dragon for free. Well, let's uh, jump into our second replay. And Pope Bellator, I want you to take this one. This is 31 minutes in where Cloud9, again, displaying their teamfight prowess as well as their ability to control the global objectives. Okay, so I, uh, we can roll the clip. I do believe C9 finishes off the Baron before the fight even begins. Maokai is just pretty much zoning everyone off 1v5. Um, Bjergsen actually plays this fight pretty well, but it's just not enough. Like, C9 is too tanky and they have the Baron buff. He lives for really long with the Lulu ultimate and the um, Mikhail's Crucible. But yeah, he goes in, does all his damage, and it's still not enough. Yeah, this is, this is a prime example of what we've been talking about all analyst desk long right here. The Tristana outranging the Lucian, he couldn't return damage. And also the fact they didn't have a front line. It took forever for somebody to go help Bjergsen. He was in that fight by himself, basically 1v5-ing for 
five seconds, six seconds, and there was nothing TSM could do about it. Well, so you have to assume now that TSM will be on the blue side, that they either force the Triss ban from Cloud9, or they take it away early, right? Yeah, I have no clue, because the prioritization of AD carries seems really strange to me. The Tristana not being something, even when Curse was blue side banning it, was just something that was baffling to me. So I really think that the Tristana needs to be picked up if it's left open by the team that is blue side, or you go ahead and you take the Zed away. Poe Belter, after the game, uh, Riv and Jat were commenting on it. Reggie and uh, Loco Doco rushed right up to the stage, and they're having their meeting there on the stage. So that implies that they have a lot to talk about. But in a sense, that's a good thing, right? Like, as a player, when you come off the stage, if, if your manager, your coach, or your analysts don't really have any answers for you, you're in a bad spot. So is that going to be a little bit of a, a boost in confidence there for TSM that they can diagnose issues? Yeah, I don't think that TSM's mentality is too broken. Like, I don't think they're a team that tilts particularly easily. Uh, I think that they'll change up their strategy going into the next games and put Bjergsen on a more consistent control-type damage dealer rather than an assassin. So um, I think TSM still has a shot in the series. Best it, of five is very long, after all. TSM is known for their mid-series adaptations. And, of course, we'll see if Cloud9 can keep the momentum up when we come back with Game 2 of our Summer Playoff Finals versus Team Solo Mid. Don't go anywhere. Let's have some fun. Finally, they get to focus on a wild turtle now trying to go crazy. Lemonation hits the last bubble. A kill coming in from Sneaky uses the heal to keep the team healthy, but it takes. Actually, he goes down to the ignite. Triple kill. Cloud9, however, is cleaning up the fight. Sneaky says King Me gets another jump. One more shot to Bjergsen. It's going to come from Meteos. 